and welcome to this episode 24 of Let's Play Rule the Waves 3 as Germany starting in 1935. It's December 1943 and 1944 beckons and it's still worrying about the internal tensions that continue to rise in Germany. I don't seem to be causing them, and I'm not being given any opportunity to lower them. It is possible that it's an internal dynamic of the game. Clearly, the 1940s in Germany was not uh, an agreeable time for uh, the regime. And so perhaps built into the game is some sense of revolution or regime change in order to remove the fascist government there. If we have a look at where we're up to with the end of 1943 you can see that we've been progressing in the kind of second tier the minor units of the fleet so you know classically when you come to peace you sort out the big ships any new aircraft carriers that we've been building uh, any new battleships or battle cruisers and then you move down into the cruisers the destroyers the corvettes the submarines and we've been largely doing that with designs for new destroyers, a couple of mine laying armed um, merchant cruisers and some submarines. We've developed a new torpedo bomber. Built has been these three carriers, taking our carrier number up to five, uh, a light cruiser and those um, merchant cruisers. And we've been also refitting the battle cruisers to take advantage of radar advances and the rest to bring them up to just modern standards. The most worrying thing, as I said, is unrest is at now level five. And I can't see how that uh, can be brought down. Britain has entered an alliance with France, but, you know, actually tensions are pretty low. I guess memo to self, I need a new dive bomber as well. So we are allied with Italy and, and Jan or Japan, as they might prefer to be called. And yeah, the unrest is high, but pretty much low with everybody else. Britain and France are allied, and we are allied. So that's that's a rough situation in terms of where we've come to in the last year. Where we're heading to really depends on the balance of forces. So I've done a little bit of calculations. The blue represents battleships, fast battleships and battle cruisers. I think most of the old slow battleships have gone now. They've been scrapped, certainly sort of the 21 inches, there, 21 knotters. There may be some 25 knot battleships still kicking about. The orange is uh, fleet carriers and the gray is light fleet carriers where two light fleet carriers counts as one here because assuming that the CVL were maxed to like 32 planes then combine their equivalent to 64 planes which is similar to a fleet carrier. I am aware that some of the CVLs aren't that big but you know it's a, a handy uh, assumption. So you can see that the USSR is the smallest followed by ourselves as Germany. Now, I happen to know that they are the highest caliber, but nonetheless, they are a modest quantity. Followed by Italy, uh, which is also not a bad quality, actually. And then France, Japan, Britain, and the United States. If we total this up between the two alliance systems at the moment, we get Britain and France almost matching the Axis powers, Germany, Japan, and Italy. And indeed, what really flatters us is the Japanese investment in aircraft carriers. Now, actually, I've just double checked and two of the French and two of the British are older battleships, you know, mid 22,000, 28,000 kind of ton things, rather than, you know, contemporary 45 to 50,000 ton ships. So that does knock this total down a fair bit. Pretty much one of these is five, so take out four of those. And it leaves us with the question of what to build next. We are a bit light on battleships, particularly, obviously, if the United States were to join Britain and France. Um, that would take this total off the screen. 
And in particular because Japan only has a couple, whereas Italy has four and Germany has four. Or we could be concerned to drive forward our advantage. Now, soonish, jet fighters are going to become a thing. So first of all, we would need to redevelop all of our carriers to be able to use jet fighters. So that in itself is a big program, especially as, you know, they're really very, very modern. So, you know, we have five carriers that we'd have to modernize. And in modernizing them, the number of planes they could carry is likely to drop a lot, you know, like nearly by half or something like that. So yeah, that is that is a concern. So there's really no point building more carriers until that happens. And I'm perhaps reluctant to build a battleship because that would take all of our available funds. If we just go over here and zoom in. So we're knocking around just under 5,000 monthly balance. Well, you know, a good battleship is going to cost 6,000, maybe even 7,000. So yeah, no point doing that. So I think I started this process going, oh, what big ship are going, am I going to build? And I've actually talked myself into, whoa, steady there, boy. Let's, let's improve the foundation and keep attending to that until these big changes come along. So I'm looking for jet fighters. I'm looking for surface to air missiles, all of those kinds of things. So, yeah. So let's just roll over that 4,000. Let's rebuild this uh, fund back up to a bit of a buffer and see what the month will bring for us. And in upheaval in Ireland, Britain is apparently sending a force there to uh, restore order. We could issue an ultimatum and see if they respected that double tension. We could push for the international force as single tension, or we could just do nothing. Okay, so I'm minded to push my luck. Um, I don't want to fight the Soviet Union again. That was a rubbish war. Uh, I want to fight a decent war. So let's um, let's see if they <laughs> if they listen to us. And indeed, they did. Well, I mean, that's a surprise. So and didn't put the tensions up as high as I thought it might. So here's a new British light cruiser, double dual purpose, five inch and three inch guns, some torpedoes, some mines. Yeah, perfectly nice. And a breakthrough in Huff Duff, high frequency direction finding, which will improve intelligence and anti-submarine warfare capability. Nice. Oh, 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 oh. I didn't expect that. So I, uh, yeah. I knew it was vaguely coming, but it could, could have been this year, could have been next year. No, January 1944, boom, here we are. Jet aircraft on aircraft carriers. I mean, obviously, we haven't actually got any jet aircraft at the moment, but we might as well start thinking about getting ready for that. Okay. Well, remind me later. I'll, I'll look at that in a minute. Let's just go through what's happening here. All right, um, I'm also building a couple of submarines. If I'm going to push it against Britain, if we look at my submarine force, we have this fair chunk of coastal submarines and then quite a large number of ordinary submarines. I feel like I probably should refocus on the coastals. So let's go to build. Let's build. Oh, you see. I'm also tempted to build some long range ones so that um, we have some flexibility if America was going to come in. But no. So I'm just going to build a single because we've got a reasonable submarine force now. If we go to the almanac and scroll down. We've got 40 submarines and we've got another 24 buildings. So taking us past 60, which gives us the largest submarine force in the world. And if we keep pushing them out, that will head towards 80 or so. 
and yeah, I'll be quite pleased with that. Okay, let's go into February. And there's some destroyers, lovely. The French have a torpedo bomber. Nothing really to worry about. Improved effectiveness of heavy AA, which I love. Specialized landing craft, which I'm not really fussed about. A new American medium bomber, that's all fine. Promoted officer. Okay. Let's go to aircraft types. Our fighter is a 1942 fighter in lieu of the um, dive bomber, uh, in lieu of the jet fighter appearing yet. We might want to go to that. Uh, the dive bomber is 1940, which is very old. Um, also, we probably want to obsolete those old fighters. And oh yeah, and it's poor reliability. That's a shocker. So yes. Let's ask for a new dive bomber. We want speed. I'm going to assume that range and bomb load are kind of fine. If we've got a 250 mile nautical mile search ability, then there's not a huge thing for dive bombers, which are only on carriers, to have range beyond that. Um, ditto bomb load. Hmm. I mean, they're all good. So the reason for speed and maneuverability is that dive bombers often have the ability to be kind of second rate fighters and they do shoot down quite a few aeroplanes. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go for that. I think that's a nice secondary ability. Thinking about carriers, so Graf Zeppelin, Always, always hard to give up an elite ship, but uh, if we go to rebuild and we have a little look, well, first of all, can we get rid of these ghastly old casemates? Let's get rid of them. We have 16 of them, so let's see if we can have 16 instead. So let's go to... Oops, double turret. And we want wing, wing. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I think you should be happy with that. Let's just check. Yeah, it's happy with that. Obviously, you need to improve things. So that, and that. And take that up to four. And then this, bing. So currently we've got just under 400 tons remaining if we hit jet capable. Whoa, <laughs> minus 7,000 tons. Okay. <laughs> That's quite an eye-watering amount, isn't it? Let's just go back and check. I, I want to take this back up to say 225 because you need a decent amount. Let's make them late dreadnought, just for appearance's sake. We're not bothered for anything else. So we're fine for this. In fact, actually take that up to four AA directors. And now it's just a simple matter of taking this down. So let's take it down to say 50. See if we can get away with that. Oh, okay. That's that's nearly there. And one and two and three. So it has to go to 47. 47. Spot value of 25. We could add deck edge lifts, which improves your ready time, which is also an important thing. Oh, I I guess it could probably have some catapults. So let's put a couple of forward catapults on. And they never get placed where they should be. And that leaves us a hundred left for mucking about. I think that's, you know, pretty reasonable. It's going to take 10 months and 900 cost. So let's okie doke that. And I think that's going to be pretty uniform for the four Peter Strasses, they're a bit bigger, so 
we might be a oh, look at that two of them are still working up and they're going to have to go in for uh for a refit hmm speaking of refits the graph spade doesn't have a fire control radar that's ridiculous um and only has level twos hmm. they, they should be improved i would like if I'm having to go to refit and get rid of this elite and good uh, quality, I would very much like to at least improve some guns or something uh, with that. Okay. So we are converting our first carrier to take jets. You'd think jets must be on their way soon. Uh, some problems with various bits. And there we go. And into April. So 7,000. This is all going to help. So there's the first of our submarines that we've been auto building to rebuild the submarine fleet all the way back. It must be 14 months or 18 months ago since peace with the Soviet Union. They would like to sell us an echoic plating. Well, that seems very reasonable. Nice. And electro torpedo reloading, which I'm sure is a very good thing. That's all great. Funds rebuilding nicely. I'm minded to build some more Z75s because as we reviewed last time, a lot of them are quite old of the destroyer force and need to be really reclassified. So hopefully with that lot, tension's low. I did my best. So from 505, so yes, that's concerning. Reports the Soviet uh, scientists have invented jet aircraft on carriers as well. So I was hoping to get a bit of a lead. Oof, from 505 to 478, ouchies. <laughs> oh, I mean, you know, Britain, all right. Tension of six is nothing to write home about, but um, yeah, ouch. Okay, Japan and Italy are still our friends nice more heavy aa effectiveness and fire control radar three okay let's no to that i probably re need to reorganize my destroyer and torpedo boat divisions but since there's no war at the moment i will hold off from that an american tension just popped up to five randomly so fire control radar three and we can see the graph spay has no fire control radar and is limited to quality two anyhow which is just unacceptable but again i will wait if tensions get to yellow or so i will put them in to refit increases in cap effectiveness that's nice Electronic bomb site, increased glide and high level bombery, so it's particularly good for the medium bombers. And we have our new torpedo bomber ready for service, which is lovely. And into August. So we're cranking through the months, building up the funds, although obviously not as much as I was. Um Go for the win, obviously. More setbacks. Ooh. America has invented early air-to-surface missiles. See, this, this is why I'm holding off. I want those air-to-surface missiles, and I want those jet fighters. Obviously, just because I want it doesn't mean I'm necessarily going to get it. Our scientists have made unexpected advances in naval aviation lighter than air. 
I don't think that's actually true. If I go to research and I look at lighter than air, which of course was one of our specialities, um, I don't think there's been a new one in a long, long time. In fact, I think we've run out of developments for lighter than air technology. We're not going in some sort of weird steampunk kind of navy way. So lots of lovely submarines commissioning. They want us to sell us acoustics torpedoes. Well, thanks. Hull construction. Some illusion of course helicopters uh, are coming soon. New dive bomber. Okay. So the Fokker Wolf is the clear winner. It's got the second or third best speed, but I mean, seven knots in it. Perfectly acceptable cruise speed. 500 mile light range going down to 300 mile heavy range. Considering we were at um, 375 and just over 200, that's a big jump in range. Firepower, maneuverability, they're all good. Uh, toughness is fine. So they're all, you know, much for muchness. Same bomb loads. They can carry medium anti uh, air to surface missiles. And um, we don't know what their reliability is, but hopefully it's better than the poor of the previous Messerschmitt. Obviously, we haven't developed air to surface missiles yet. Head of Naval Aviation wishes to bring to our attention that we could now develop light jet fighters should we request tenders for a new prototype. Hell yes. Right. And hmm, what qualities would we like in a jet fighter? So I think I'm going to say speed and firepower. Let's make a fast brute. Yes, it probably will be a little less maneuverable, but yeah, I'd be quite excited to see what that's going to be like. And more submarines. Auto loaders for six inches. Okay, so again, because my gun technology is weirdly poor, despite having it on the highest level of research. Uh, Auto-loaded dual-purpose 3-inch. Yeah, okay, well, I mean, nice, but not terribly helpful. And we've gone to yellow with Britain. Okay, it's not, you know, fever pitch, but it certainly is something. Uh, how are we doing for construction? Okay, so the Graf Zeppelin is about to come out. So when it comes out, we'll put another one in. And new docks completed. That's given how much jet aircraft reduce the number of uh, planes you have on the deck. Having these big docks is absolutely essential. Well, how wonderful. Poor old Dangzig having a rubbish captain. Ah, the old foreign policy gaffe. Well, we could just say that we would never undercut the authority of the leader and gain a prestige and attention. But if we uh, point to Britain, we get double tension and budget. So let's let's do that one, shall we? Improves firefighting in carriers. Fire control radar four. Okay, now we are going to refit some battleships with some stunningly good radars. Early surface to surface missiles, but it's frankly complicated stuff. Tell me about it. Okay, so first of all, Graf Spey, open redesign for rebuild. Let's go to this. Ooh, so we can go to number six. Oh, okay. Of course, it's in Japan. <laughs> so in Japan, they're quite far behind in their radar, whereas we can go to level five. Okay, level five is still good. We can up to our fire control as well. 
Uh, 85 rounds per shell. I mean, I guess if those shells are really telling because they're hitting, because of the better fire control and the better radar, then fair enough. That's a big cost. 2,000. I'm just going to come out and go back in and see what costs so much. Okay, on a base of 1,600 and the fire control. Oh, again, back to Germany. It goes to Japan because that's where it was built. Okay, so actually that does cost quite a lot. And take that up to five. Is that okay? Yep, that's okay. So, okay, actually it's mainly the fire control that has the cost. I don't think there's much else we can do, particularly. We could raise that to 30 and 30, just to, um, I don't know, make it neat. But okay, let's push that one through and get them going. So that's the Graf Spey. And I'm going to do the same for the Von der Tarn. Take that up, take that up. Uh, here we have to lose something, so I'm going to have to deduct. Mm, that's a lot. I don't want to deduct that much. Deduct a little from that, yeah, okay. Just check that that's all okay, that's all okay. And which this one, you see, this is why it's so important to have a little bit of weight remaining because these updates are absolutely crucial. So that's okay for them and send them through. And then we'll do the Graf Stauffenburgs in a minute. And let's get the first of the Peter Strasses into rebuild as well. So yes, yes, ouch, 44, eek, oh well. And that's uh, okay, change the fire control. Okay, only 500, but 10 months. So that is, you know, quite a big chunk of time. So yes, we need to get these through. In fact, I I wonder whether to do that twice and just go to here and get the Richthofen and put the Richthofen into rebuild as well. Obviously this makes us quite weak at a time when our tensions have climbed to a giddy nine, but, uh, Set aircraft exceed. Oh, of course, because I've completely remodeled it. So let's go and change that because they cannot cope with this number. So, well, I'll, I'll fiddle around and try and get what I might think of as an optimum number. Okay, so I've gone for 10 torpedo bombers, 10 dive bombers, 10 fighters, and 14 fighters. The jet fighters are going to absolutely rock, and it, you could equally argue, actually, get rid of the dive bombers. They are, you know, past their time. And similar amounts on the Graf Zeppelin. In fact, I'll probably, once we get our jet fighter, look at the relative capabilities. Obviously, the torpedo bombers are the only ones that can carry torpedoes. But yeah, do we really need dive bombers? Expeditionary force there might risk, so we don't want to risk annoying the Americans, even though they grab another colony. I know they don't like to think of themselves as an empire, but you know, Dominican Republic, Philippines, various islands splattered across the uh, Pacific Ocean and the Caribbean, not to mention imperialistic behavior in the Monroe Doctrine in South America. It was an empire. Suck it up. Right. Commission three submarines. Okay, so our coastals have started entering service and have caught up with the build of our 
medium range ones. Revolution in an African country. The old strong bombardment. I'm gonna just go for the medium tension and budget here because obviously I'm in the middle of upgrading both battleships and carriers and waiting for my decisive jet fighters to come along. Tensions with uh, Britain are now higher. So here comes the Van der Tern and the Graf Spey, which is great. Tensions with Britain now. Oh, um, tension is high between our eye. Uh, how do we act? We support them. Or, yeah, no, we support them. Absolutely. Uh, breakthrough in armor. Private venture for a torpedo bomber. So it's slightly faster, slightly longer range. This, the M here, means that the Heinkel can carry a torpedo at both medium range and heavy range. Whereas this means it can carry a torpedo at medium range and two at heavy range. So that seems like a, uh, a nice thing to have. So we'll have that. And <laughs> in my excitement, I, uh, I assumed it was just coming up to the end of 44 and entering 45, which in fact, we've already entered March 1945. So sorry about that. I'll, I'll end this episode here and stop being so giddy and have a look uh, at the beginning of the next episode for 1944's statistics and then plough on with March 45. Unrest is at six. I've taken my eye off that ball and yeah, it means that if we were to go to war with Britain and its ally France, let's just check that uh, Britain and France are still allies. Britain, France, allies, yep. Tension between them is three. Then, you know, it would absolutely need to be a short war because Britain would be likely to blockade us and yeah, uh, the government would probably fall. Hmm, yes. I'll have to have a little think about that because this, this is getting out of control, but it might not be within my gift to sort that out. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm on holiday for a week off to lay in the African sun. Uh, I'll be back. Hopefully you won't notice too much of a disruption uh, with the next episode coming pretty soon after I get back. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.